Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar on Join the STEM Alliance and IBM Skills Build Competition. This webinar is co-organized by the STEM Alliance, Scientix, and IBM. My name is Bjorn, and I'm coordinating European SchoolNet's activities in this competition. Together with us in the room today, we have my colleagues Julia and Isidora, who will be supporting this webinar from a technical point of view. So if you have any issues, with your audio or connection, please do not hesitate to send them a message in the chat. But most importantly, I have the pleasure to welcome our speakers for today, Evelina Pernerut and Sam Forrest from IBM. Thank you so much to the two of you for being here today, presenting and later also answering to our audience's question and questions. Now, let's start with some technical aspects. First of all, you will see that the microphones have been disabled. So if you have a question to our speakers, you can just post them in the chat for now. And later during the Q&A session in the end, we will uh, address them to the speakers and you will also be able to raise your hand if you want to talk directly to them. And you can then unmute your microphones if you want to speak. Also to get a greater experience out of this webinar, you can open the chat where we will be sharing useful information and links with you throughout this event. And as I've said, this, this is an interactive webinar, so you can share your questions and comments in this chat window. And here we already have the first link that we are sharing. It's the participation list. It's quite crucial uh, that we ask you to fill in your uh, participation here so that you can validate you've participated in today's event. <clears throat> and we would really need this to prove that this event actually took place so that we can continue organizing events like this one in the future. And also, if you're interested in a certificate of participation, this is the only way to get one. Now, let's go to our agenda for today. We will start with a, um, an intervention from Evelina and Sam about some insights on how to bridge the digital education divide and an introduction to the Skills Build platform. So after that, I will tell you more about the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition and how you can win 500 euros for your classroom. And I can already share some great news with you now. The deadline for the submissions has been extended to the 31st of May. So this means that you still have time to prepare in this competition if you hadn't had the time uh, to do so until now. So after this, I will give you a step-by-step -step walk through the lesson plan template, which you will need to participate in this competition. And finally, we will have time for your questions. As mentioned, you will be able to post questions throughout the webinar and in the chat, we will address them later in the Q&A session. So don't be shy, share your questions and thoughts with us in the chat. And now before we continue with the step-by-step -step guides on the competition, I'm happy to introduce you to our expert speakers for today. Now, Evelina Pernerut is the CSR manager for Northern Europe at IBM, and she has a background in psychology with a passion for the power of people and how we as humans can create success together with amazing tech solutions. Evelina believes that equal education is crucial for a resilient society, and therefore one of IBM's main CSR focal points is education and skills. Evelina and her team are running various educational initiatives in Europe, both for students, educators, and adult learners. So Evelina, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Friday afternoon and the sun is shining in Stockholm, so perfect. <laughs> Great to hear. And um, yeah, you are joined today also by your colleague Sam Forrest, who is the CSR assistant for IBM Europe. He has worked on supporting the deployment of the IBM Skills Build platform, as well as undertaking significant training and professional development opportunities. Currently, Sam is supporting IBM's educational training platforms, volunteering initiatives, and competitions across Europe. How's it going, Sam? I'm very well, thank you, Vaughan. Good to hear. 
And yeah, I'm curious to hear what you will tell us. Uh, you're going to talk about the bridge or how we can bridge the digital education divide. And you will also demonstrate the IBM Skills Bowl platform so that the educators who are joining us today and who want to participate in the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Bolt competition are prepared. So, Evelina and Sam, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Bjorn. So, uh, hi again, and very happy to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, I will start talking about what we as a player in the tech industry see as a challenge when it comes to future skills. And then, we'll be, then we will go into some answers and more specifically this uh, skills speed platform, which is an important tool for us and also the tool for this specific competition. Uh, so, um, as you all know, I mean, we live in difficult, uh, but also in many ways, exciting times. COVID has accelerated the digital transformation, but it has unfortunately also widened the gap uh, between those who have the skills to succeed and those who don't. Uh, and for us in the tech industry, it's important to shift this and to help um, help to get more diverse, more diverse workforce and expand the ways for people to enter into the workforce. So the slide that you see here now comes from a new report from PwC that talks about the workforce of the future. Uh, and what you see is that the majority thinks that technology will improve the job prospects in the future. And even more people believe that it's um, their own responsibility to update their skills. Um, and we agree with this, uh, uh, that this is true both for adults and uh, for students, but in order to create a society where everyone can take the responsibility, we need to make sure that we help both grown up and younger people to get access to good, valuable training. Um, so I also want to, uh, want to show you um, uh, this slide. Uh, it's about the latest findings from the Data People's 222 hiring report. And this specific report is from the US, but we see the, exactly the same trends here in, the, in Europe. Uh, so after a small decrease in 2020, job posts for tech jobs are now increasing uh, and has nearly doubled uh, in 2021. And at the same time, uh, we can see that the average number of applicants have shrunk. And in Sweden, uh, we say that we will be missing uh, 70,000 people in the tech industry by 2024, which is basically now, right? Uh, so it's fair to say that companies are starved for candidates for tech jobs like never before. Uh, and for the students that choose to go into a STEM career, uh, they will have a bright future. So this is, of course, something we want to help with. Uh, so going back to what we can do about this, um, as previous slide has shown, we need more people into the tech industry and we believe uh, that tech, um, uh, the talent is everywhere, but training opportunities are not. Um, and this is why we must take big and bold steps to expand access to digital skills so that more people, regardless of the background, can take advantage of the digital economy. Uh, and we see that this will help democratize opportunities, it will fill the growing skills gap, and it will give this new generation uh, new tools that they will need to build a better future, both for themselves, but also for our whole society. Um, so we also see that it's important that IT companies like, like ourselves, the governments and organizations like the STEM Alliance, work together to build free programs that can help us to to fix this skill gap. Um, so uh, at IBM, we have developed, for example, Skills Built, uh, which uh, Sam will tell you a bit more about, but it's a free online program for students and also for adult learners, teachers, and job seekers that offers courses uh, that successfully upskill, reskill, and prepare uh, people for the future work. And in this specific competition, we will use uh, the Skills Built for Student, uh, which is a part of the platform. Uh, and Skills Built for Student offers a fun, self-paced training built by experts in the industry. Uh, the students can also take badges to show what they have achieved. And it's also designed for teachers, so it will help you to bring the technology and the workplace skills into your classrooms. Um, 
So with skills built, we want to get more students interested in tech and more people into the tech industry faster because uh, we need them. Uh, and we need the skills and not necessarily a certain degree. Uh, so this is one of our answers and one of our contributions. So um, over 1000 courses on workplace skills like collaboration, presentation, and even more on technical skills like data, analy uh, data analytics, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence and cloud computing. Uh, and then, as I said earlier, we have industry recognized badges and curated content uh, for students and, and uh, educators. Uh, and we also partner with various NGOs to support them in their work with this. Um, so just to summarize then the differentiators for, for when it comes to IBM skills. So um, it's globally accessible. It's an open platform available in 11 languages, so free of charge. Uh, it's give the students opportunity to earn uh, relevant badges. It's designed for the future workforce with engaging and relevant content for, for teens. Uh, and it's also uh, easy and flexible to implement. So if you have an internet connection, you can use uh, the platform. Uh, so with that a background on why this is so important for us and why we want more students to get into tech, I will hand over to uh, my colleague Sam. Perfect. Thank you very much, Evelina. So I'm just going to talk a bit more about the content on Skills Build for Students, along with sort of just a tiny bit of background, a bit more background on the platform, and then I'll lead into some beginnings of the competition information. So IBM has its own internal uh, teaching software. And IBM Skills Build is that exact same software, just with content designed for students and educators in the field of uh, technology. But it also has lots of courses and things like mindfulness and professional skills. So on the slide in front of you, you can see some of the badges that it has. So Skills Build really tries to gamify learning. So once you do some specific courses you can be eligible for a digital credential in the form of a badge and that is issued by IBM or one of its partners it produced the content with depending on the badge so as you can see it's 20 badges in well, it's much more than 20 badges now um it's more like 50 badges with a lot of content I mean there's so much content on the platform I would strongly recommend after this webinar, if you just log on, you can sign up for free, you just go and just have a poke around. It has a considerable amount of content on, on various topics, mostly technology, mostly emerging technology, uh, but like I say, also into the other areas. And so then once you have the student content, which is aimed at children aimed 14 to 18, you also have the educators content, which sort of sits alongside it. So if you need to teach a lesson on AI, but you don't really <laughs> know AI, I understand from, from my, when I was at school, not very long ago, I wasn't taught half the things students are taught now. Um, so you can take the educator's ba badge and take the educator's course, and that will teach you sort of how to teach AI. And it, it sits sort of alongside the student's badge. So, and Skills for Educators is available to you once you sign up uh, a school or organisation, then all your teachers get put onto the educators platform and you get access to all of that good uh, content to help to help you teach uh, students technology. So these are some of the current metrics we have on the platform. I won't go through them all. Uh, they're very, very varied. Um, with in terms of location and where we have the learners, but we, we want everyone to have the opportunity to learn on the platform. It's free, the content is, we, we produce it with many different partners, some like Oxford University, Coursera, as well as uh, IBM and, and Cisco, and that's only a couple of them. So it's really high quality learning and the content itself is dynamic. It's not text on screen it's videos, it's labs, it's lots of different ways to engage students online and it sits perfectly between 
you can use it in in classroom you can use it to set your students homework and so it works really well sort of alongside all of that and so that leads on to the uh, competition and the module focus so we really want you to to go onto skills build to have a look at, at the content itself and as i said with a huge amount of content and badges where we're recommending you start is with one of these three uh, modules or, or badges so the first one being digital technology so as i said the first learning on there was the digital technology learning ibm is a tech company and we really are keen to teach young people technology so the explore emerging tech badge will give you an introduction in the all the emerging techs ibm is currently developing so that's ai blockchain cybersecurity, cloud internet of things and that's quite a it introduces all those topics so it's a really good place to start if you want to start your students on sort of the emerging technologies that ibm and other uh, technology companies are really interested in and then there's the professional skills badge which I found schools really, really like. So that's five modules on varying things like presentation skills. It's so important for young people once they are looking for a job to sort of know how to handle themselves in a job interview to be able to do all these things like I'm doing now, which I've been taught <laughs> how, to, how to present and you can criticize my presentation techniques but it's a lot better than if I hadn't had any education on it at all um so that's that's another really good good module to start with which uh, we're, we're recommending and then the third one is mindfulness so this is uh the, one of the badges created alongside Oxford University in the UK so it's it's a really good badge on introductory concepts in mindfulness in today's world i think everyone could do, do, do with a bit of being mindful um so i really hope once once sort of we finish the webinar once bjorn's finished explaining the uh, lesson plans you you go on have a look through can really think about how you can implement it with your students and hopefully sign up the the school or educational organization you're attached to and 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 work with us to to help teach so uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a Q&A in a minute and uh, I'll happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Evelina and Sam, for this uh, introduction and setting the scene, uh, basically why it is so relevant that we work on students' skills in our societies. And that's also exactly what the STEM Alliance does. It's about the skills and the careers that we have in STEM education, which touches upon so many things, as you see here in the modules, it's uh, digital technology, professional skills, but also mindfulness, which we believe uh, is very crucial in our societies nowadays. And I see also a comment here in the chat from Anita Shimatz, uh, who has already explored some of these modules on mindfulness. And I completely agree that social emotional learning is really important nowadays. So before we move on, uh, just a kind reminder to fill out the participation list. As I've mentioned in the beginning, it is crucial that you validate your attendance here in this webinar. And uh, this is also the only way that you can get a certificate of attendance if you like so. so if Alina and Sam have just given an overview of, uh, of the IBM Skills Build platform and what it offers, and I want to give you now an overview of what the STEM Alliance IBM Skills Build competition is about and how you can participate to win your 500 euro voucher for your classroom. So, I've mentioned it already in the beginning. The great news it has, uh, yeah, that we have to announce today is that the extension has, uh, the deadline has been extended to the end of this month. So you still have plenty of time to participate and to work on your lesson plan, which I will show you in more detail in a minute. So if you have not had the time to prepare and uh, you still need this time, then you have it now until the 31st of May. But more broadly, what is this competition about? 
So the competition calls for teachers to create a lesson plan that integrates IBM skills build modules that Sam has just presented. So you need to present or integrate these in your STEM class. And I will tell you more about the lesson plan in a minute. But more broadly speaking, the main goal of the competition is to make students familiar with the connection between their school subjects and STEM careers, as well as the skills that Evelina has mentioned uh, that are required for pursuing these STEM careers. So how can we make these connections? You can show us in your lesson plan and the three best lesson plans will be rewarded with a 500 euro gift voucher for STEM equipment in your class, and they will also be published to serve as good examples for practice. Now, participating is fairly easy. You just visit the competition website, which you will find in the chat window, but also you can click here on the slides. You will find all the information that you need there. Most importantly, you will find the terms and conditions and the competition guidelines there. And well, the first step for participating here is to register in the competition using the registration form. And again, you will find it here on the website. Once you're registered, you can download the template for the lesson plan and then start the preparation of the lesson plan. So check out the terms and conditions on our website. You will find all the necessary information there. I know it's a long document, but you will have much better chances of winning if you're informed about this and if you're well prepared. So prepare the lesson plan by checking out the IBM Skills Build resources and registering to the Skills Build platform. You can submit your lesson plan in one of the three following categories, depending on which module you choose. It's either digital technology, mindfulness or professional skills. It's this, the three badges that Sam mentioned. <clears throat> and so I identified the STEM subject, the IBM Skills Build module that you want to use and the age range of your students to consider possible learning activities according to your, their age, their previous knowledge, and their differences. So this is really the, the preparation and some points that you need to consider, but also this may become clearer as we walk through the lesson plan in a minute. Now, step two would be to fill out the lesson plan template. And this template contains several fields that allow both the jury, but also other teachers to understand and replicate what you've submitted. So fill these fields out with as much detail and with as much clarity as possible. Now there is also an option you will see once you register on the IBM Skills Build platform uh, that you can post your lesson plan online on IBM Skills Build. And uh, yeah, with all the fields that you filled out in the template, you will be able to post your lesson plan on the platform. Uh, you will find more guidance on how to do that on the website, but this is optional. So what's important to participate is that you submit the lesson plan in the submission form. That's the most important part to be eligible for this competition. Now, step three would be to submit your lesson plan to the competition. And again, before you submit, make sure to read all the details in the competition guidelines that you find in the terms and conditions. Also make sure that your entry is in English. And if you attach a document with a cloud service, uh, we've had this many times in the past that a teacher uh, shared a link with us to Google Drive or another cloud service, and we didn't have the right to access that link. So make sure in the settings when you share the link that you enable the settings that also external people can access because only then we can see what you're actually submitting. And again, all data needs to be to submitted by the 31st of May before midnight Central European summertime. And that's pretty much it. So Step four would be to spread the world, uh, spread the word and let the world know about your activities and uh, share this on social media. 
And finally, you can win your prize. So as I've mentioned, the prizes consist of the vouchers for uh, STEM equipment in your classroom, and the first three winners will each get a 500 euro voucher. Of course, if you want to prepare, you did absolutely the right thing to join today because this is where you can ask your questions. We're providing a step by step guide, but also we have resources on our website. Uh, first of all, the terms and conditions provide all the information you need, but we have also prepared an FAQ, a frequently asked questions document, and we also have provided some example lesson plans that can serve as inspiration. So, this being said, again, ask your questions here in the chat if anything has been unclear so far. We'll be happy to address your questions later. Otherwise, I will now continue with the lesson plan, which is really the core of this competition, because that's what we will we will evaluate. And um, yeah, here, let's maybe first of all answer the question, what the lesson plan is in the first place. So a lesson plan, generally speaking, is a standalone description of your educational activities that you're carrying out in your classroom, connected to a specific topic. And in this case, of course, it's very clear what the topic is. It's the integration of the skills build platform modules in your STEM class. And this includes also certain objectives, your pedagogical method methods, uh, the time and duration that you need, the target age, and so on. Now, you can use lesson plans as an organizational tool, so it helps you to get an overview of what you're planning. You can reflect it on it, you can visualize it, but it also allows um, other teachers to learn from your inspiration and learn from your ideas and to actually replicate this in different contexts. Now, in the next slides, I would like to guide you through the lesson plan template. And as a matter of fact, I will share my screen so that you can see it right away as a document, and then we can go through it together. And this lesson plan is a very common word document, so you can just download it on the competition website. And basically what you will see here is that you have a title and of course this is just a placeholder. So whenever you come up with your lesson plan title, you can replace this here and write your own title. Then it should look like something like this. Be aware that on the next pages, you also have it in the header section. So also adapt it here. And voila, you have it. Uh, you have already taken the first step. Then it's fairly easy. You just enter your name, your school and organization, and you provide a very short summary of your lesson plan. So what is it that will be addressed? Perhaps which module, in which way will you address it? And what's the overall topic of your lesson plan? It really should not be more than three sentences. So keep it short and sweet. That's what helps most if people look at your lesson plan and they just see this very uh, well on the first side, basically. Then we have the key elements, and this is a table where you can provide an overview of the subjects. So, you know, this needs to be related to STEM subjects. So is it about, is it in your biology, chemistry, uh, class or is it in your maths class really just specify where this can be implemented and specify the module that you're integrating it needs to be one of these three and however within these badges as sam has mentioned there there's so much content that you can use you don't need to use all of it just choose the aspects that are most useful for your class and what matters to us is that you integrate it in a creative way, and we can see how this has created added value to your class and to your students. 
When it comes to your students, specify the age range so that other teachers know uh, what age range this is uh, yeah, um, suitable for. Also, specify the preparation time, not how much time it took you to prepare for this competition, but rather how much time it takes to prepare for the class. So how much time does a teacher need to prepare in order to implement your lesson plan? And similarly, the teaching time is about the actual lesson plan. Now, you've specified above the badge, but here provide all the links of the specific module units that you've used and provide the links. That's it in this part. If there's other online teaching material that you want to use, you can of course do so. Just provide the links here. And if there is offline teaching material, also specify this here. So far, so good. Let's move to the learning objectives. And this is a really important part. Maybe let's zoom in here a bit more. And yeah, for the learning objectives, it's crucial as a first step to determine what it is that you want learners to learn and be able to do at the end of the class. So once you figure this out, that's when you can plan all the activities that follow. And I will just share here a slide. You will also find it later in, uh, in the slides when we share them as a follow up. But for the learning objectives, what's really important, um, maybe these questions can help you uh, when you answer the questions. What is the topic of the lesson? What do you want learners to learn? What do you want them to understand and be able to do at the end of class? And what do you want them to take away from this particular lesson? Now, once you outline the learning objectives, sort them in terms of their importance, so prioritize them, and then you can manage your class time and accomplish uh, the more important learning objectives first. Here are some guidelines and some inspirations. So the learning objectives should be so-called smart, that is specific, measurable, acceptable, realistic, and time-bound. And we've also provided a link here where you can get more information on how to define good learning objectives. Now, the next part will be on the lesson plan activities. You will see here that there is a table and the single most important thing is that these activities are related to the learning objectives that you have specified above. Really make sure that we can see a connection and that it's clear what you want to achieve with your activities. Always ask yourself, am I actually um, yeah, am I actually organizing an activity that brings the students closer to the learning objectives? So consider the types of activities that learners will need to engage in to develop the skills or the knowledge that are required to learn effectively. And try to provide them with experiences to um, yeah, to the to the extent that will enable them to engage in uh, to practice or to gain feedback on specific, um, yeah, on the specific progress towards the learning objectives. And as you plan your learning activities, also estimate how much time you will need in the implementation for each activity. So just as an example, the first activity could be an introduction or a warm up. So in this field, you type in the name and in the procedure, you just specify what you do. So this could be a, perhaps uh, an open question, uh, a brainstorm or a quiz just to dive into the topic. And then here you say maybe this introduction will take five minutes. Then you continue with an activity. It could be a group work, for example. Um, whatever suits your lesson plan and whatever brings the students closer to the learning objectives. Now, there are some questions that you can think about when you design your activities. And some questions could be, 
what will you do to explain the topic? Uh, what will you do to illustrate the topic in a different way? How can you engage learners in the topic? And what are some relevant real life examples or analogies or situations that can help learners to understand the topic? Then as you move on, let's actually scroll down further here. As I've mentioned, there is an option to also post the lesson plan on the IBM Skills Boat platform. So you can, if you did this, you can provide the link here. And finally, you can add some comments just if we need to be aware of anything else in the implementation of this class, you can put some teacher's remark or if you have actually implemented this lesson plan, you can also share how it went or if you have any comments, any improvements, uh, you can just add them here. Now, if you scroll further down here, you just have some uh, some more information on the disclaimer, but here you will see that there is a space for annexes and the annexes are useful if you use, for instance, handouts or extra material that needs to be printed out or some guidance and supporting documents for students, then you can share them here. Make sure you add a title of each annex and you provide all the information in this document because as I've said in the beginning, it's a standalone document, this lesson plan. So everything that a teacher needs to know and needs to have to implement your class should be in here. Now, here we have the useful questions again. As I've mentioned, we will share these slides in the end. And with this being said, let's move on back to the slides in our plenary session here. We have now time for your questions. I hope that the presentation on not only on the competition, but also on the lesson plan was clear. But if you have still any questions, then please post them now. You can also raise your hand if you want to talk directly and we can address the questions either to our experts from IBM who are here today. So uh, they, they will know anything related to the IBM Skills Bolt platform if you have questions there or if you want to know more about how to register, how to participate in this competition, you can also ask right now. Then one question that we've received in the past and that has been raised several times, maybe Sam, you can specify, how can teachers register to the IBM Skills Build platform and how do they register their students? It's a great question. Um, so if you go onto the skillsbuild.org website, so if you Google Skills Build, it will take you to the IBM Skills Build page. And that has lots and lots of instructions on how to, to sign up your school or organization onto the platform. The reason we say um, sign up a school organization is so that you can take advantage of all the educators functions of IBM Skills Build. So that includes monitoring your students progress using the platform along with the ability to create things like uh, quizzes and lesson plans on, on the IBM Skills Build platform. So we strongly recommend you do this. And you, so you just go onto the website, um, sign up your school, you fill out a short form, it will take you one to two working days for this to be created, and then you'll get emailed a sign up link, which you can then just send out to your students. All they have to do is they have to click it, really sign up very a short amount of information and they're on the platform and you can monitor them and set them homework and you can do all those great things. There, we do have technical support. So if you have any problems with signing up, there is an email on the website, which you can uh, email our admin team and they'll be able to assist you if you do have any problems in, in that sort of respect but that's how you you do it all right thanks a lot and you mentioned that this is completely free of charge right 
completely free um will we'll be free <laughs> so there's no charge to you there's no ads there's on the platform there's nothing like that so it's designed for teachers and students and we really want teachers and students to use it okay thanks a lot so here we actually have a question from like from a teacher can primary school classes participate and indeed you can participate however be aware that the primary let's say the the focus of this competition is most suitable for learners that are 14 years old and older so perhaps you can come up with a lesson plan but it may not be very suitable to be implemented in pri primary school or you create a lesson plan that can be implemented yeah technically regardless of the age but the primary focus and the most suitable age group is 14 years and older sam do you want to add something about the age range maybe well that's exactly right the reason we say uh 14 and up is only because of the content it's designed for students aged 14 and up so as Bjorn says, if you've got a really technical minded uh, class of 11 year olds who you think would benefit from using the platform, then please sign up, create a lesson plan, get involved. But just when you're looking at the content, just, just bear in mind the ability range of your students really carefully. Exactly. And this is also a point that we usually highlight when it comes to the learning objectives. Really be aware of your students backgrounds, their age range and their uh, their differences. So make it appropriate for your students, but also be aware that this content is usually for students that are uh, around 14 or older. Then we have a question here from Daniela. Is there any place in the lesson plan where we can post photos taken during the implementation? And I think this is a great idea. Actually, the place for submitting these photos is not in the lesson plan itself, but you can do it in the submission form. So you will find a section there where you can submit supporting materials or some uh, supporting evidence, and that's where you can submit your photos. Just be aware, and this is something we need to highlight uh, over and over again, uh, with privacy and data protection issues. So make sure that you blur the faces of your students because they're usually minors and this way uh, we're we're safe from that side so otherwise it's great to see how you implemented your lesson plan and i think it would be very inspiring also but yes the the place to do this is in the submission form itself not in the lesson plan template all right, then we also have a question on the duration of the lesson plan. Uh, maybe Sam or Evelina, so how long should a lesson plan be? What do you think? Or how long should the the class be to uh, when you implement a lesson plan? So in the, the lessons I've done in the past with uh, students where we use skills for students, what works really well is sort of half and half. So in the UK, most lessons last about an hour in length. So how we did it, we did 30 minutes of uh, talking about sort of the content, we watched some videos, we had some class discussions, and then we had the second half of the lesson to be uh, sort of learning on skills build and they, if they had any questions, they could sort of put their hands up and could go over them and answer them. So I, I, I would say probably about that much. And if, if you want, I, and half and half is what I'd recommend. It worked really well uh, for, for this group of students that I've done a couple of lessons with. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Okay, yes. So indeed, um, yeah, we should not, these lesson plans, they should not be too long. So 
um, yeah, it's always great to see the dedication of teachers, but if they come up with a five hour lesson plan, that's of course not very realistic to be implemented by other teachers. So really the maximum that we say is one didactical hour or maximum two. So it should not be longer than two hours, not more than 120 minutes. I think that's usually a rule of thumb that worked well in the past. Now, uh, when it comes to online teaching, I mean, we're now in more and more countries. We're going back to face to face education and some parts we still have online education. So does that make any difference? Uh, where should this lesson plan be situated? Um, what's your stance on that? Sorry, I wasn't sure if Evelina was going to speak then. Yes. Um, so the platform it was launched in May 2020. It was designed to assist students in online learning. So it, it can work perfectly as online learning. If you are still doing uh, online learning, you can do a lesson plan where you can set students some work um, over skills board and they can do that independently in their own homes. That it works really well or you can do it do it in person it's a really flexible platform with the educators functionality where you can see exactly what your students are completing uh, and and in that sort of way you can congratulate them for completing badges uh, I would say to complete a badge it isn't easy uh, you do have to do some work so and, and but that makes it better for the students that sense of achievement that sense of the teacher over a course of five lessons we've done five different modules now i've achieved this and i think that's really important for students to really work hard and then to get uh something that they can put on a on a cv or a university or a, a, a job application and i think that's really important but in terms of where your lesson plan whether it has to be in person or can be online then that's completely up to you depending on how you're currently working at the time and depending on how you think skills build would best uh, be utilized by your students so sorry sam i was trying to unmute myself so i was trying <laughs> to answer <laughs> but i agree with you it but it worked both ways so i think whatever suits their the students and the and the certain teacher Great. So in this sense, I see you really have a lot of flexibility in how you implement this. And I think the lesson plan template itself, it also provides uh, several opportunities to make it clear how you implement your class and how you want to use these skills build modules. OK, great. Then I think let's let's maybe have one more question on the registration for the platform itself because a question that we've received is which account to use is it just a regular email address does it have to be the organization's email address so what are uh, the the regulations there to create a skills build account so for so you can sign up as an individual or an organization if you sign up as an individual you won't get access to any of the educators functionalities you'll only get access to the students learning and you, you to enter the competition you need to sign up as an organization so to sign up as an individual you can use whatever email account you acquire but to sign up as an organization we're asking if you can use your schools or education organization or email to to do that sign up and for all your students, if they have a school or educational organization email to sign up their account via their student email. I, all, all it means is that it can ensure all students are situated in your school and none accidentally get put as an independent learner. As all it will mean is that you'll just have slightly less functionality. So that's what we're recommending. All right, and you've also mentioned that you can track your students learning. So how does that work when students sign up? Is there a way that 
a teacher, for instance, who's concerned about the privacy or about the anonymity of their students, maybe there are some concerns with the parents. So how can we assure this? Is there a way, for instance, to use uh, creative names or uh, like pseudonyms? Is that an option? You can do it. Um, what I would say is when you get a badge, you, you may run into a problem of it being issued. If, if, so if, if I signed up with the name Seth Frost, your badge may be issued to Seth Frost and not Sam Forrest. So there is that slight issue. However, IBM, I believe, uh, has a significant amount of privacy. From our standpoint, we can't see um, the names of the students using the platform. So the only people so once you sign up as an organization and you get sent a link and then you sign up with your students under that link, you'll be able to see. So the first person to sign up will be the admin and then they'll be able to see everything in your school and your school alone. And then your teachers will be able to see the students signed up under them. but They won't be able to see the students in another class in your school if you signed up multiple. So in that is to try and briefly sort of explain the um, how the information is viewed so only the teacher will see their students and the admin will see your school and you'll be the only people who will see that um we won't but if you are really worried you can use pseudonyms but the badge may be issued to the wrong name okay that's actually a good point to raise and i think with this being said we have not received any other questions I think it's a Friday afternoon. It's sunny outside. I see where Evelina is also here in Brussels. It is sunny. So let me just one more time uh, draw your attention back to this Demo Alliance IBM Skills Build competition links. You will find all the necessary information on the links here on the slide. And we have supporting materials uh, also here in the slides that I've mentioned. But of course, you can also stay tuned and find out more on social media. Now, as previously mentioned, if uh, you want a certificate of participation, you need to fill out this form. But also, generally, we ask you to fill in this signature list so we can uh, validate the participation in today's event. And finally, we are also sharing a feedback survey because we're very much interested in what you think about the events that we're organizing. So this will take about three minutes of your time and you will have the option to share your thoughts and feedback so we know how to improve in the future. Now, the recording of this webinar together with the slides will be made available in the following days on the STEM Alliance website. And we will, of course, also send you a follow up email with the resources, with the slides and so on. So you have all the information and the details that you need. Remember, you have until the 31st of May to participate in this competition. And if you need further guidance, check out the website or reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. So thank you so much, Evelina and Sam, for your demonstration. And thanks also to the audience for your questions. That's all from our side. Take care, stay safe, and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.